Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 6th of February. India's Uttarakhand set for uniform civil code debut, bill tabled in assembly. As election looms, Pakistanis say wavered inflation makes it difficult to survive. And activists in POK and UK flag Pakistani atrocities on Kashmir Solidarity Day. And now for all the details. The Indian state of Uttarakhand on Tuesday tabled the Uniform Civil Code Bill in the State Assembly aimed to introduce continuous new common personal laws that will apply across religious and communities. In a post on microblogging site X, Chief Minister Pushka Singh Dhami called the tabling of the bill as historic moment and said it will become a strong pillar for the vision of One India, Best India. If passed, the Nadan state will be the first state to have common court in India where Hindus, Muslims and Christians have different personal laws and customs for marriage, divorce, adoption and inheritance. Being a divisive issue, Muslims believe a common court is an interference with centuries-old Islamic practices including polygamy and instant divorce. A national common law is a decade-old election pledge of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP. After clearance in the northern Himalayan state, other BJP-ruled states are likely to follow the suit using Uttarakhand UCC draft as a template. India's Committee on External Affairs in a report to the Lok Sabha has highlighted that Pakistan's spy agency ISI is providing a safe haven to terrorist outfits. The report states that the government should keep up its diplomatic efforts to expose the nefarious activities of Pakistan at every forum while strengthening its land borders and sea routes to prevent terrorist infiltration. It paints a stark picture of the deep-rooted connections between ISI and terrorist outfits operating in the region. Despite the absence of high-level interactions with Pakistan in the last three years, India has consistently raised concerns about Pakistan's support for cross-border terrorism at various international forums. India has strained ties with Pakistan because of its continuous infiltration attempts in Jammu and Kashmir. And amid the India-Canada row, the Indian High Commissioner to Canada, Sanjay Kumar Verma on Monday said that until Canada shares any evidence, New Delhi will not provide information to Canadian investigators over the murder of Khanasali terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar. In an interview to a foreign media outlet, Verma said, unless India sees something relevant and specific, it would be extremely difficult to do anything to help the Canadian authorities. Diplomatic tensions erupted after Canada's PM Justin Trudeau said there was evidence connecting Indian government agents to the murder of Nijar. India has refuted the claims and called them absurd. With Pakistan's general election slated this week, the common citizens have expressed concerns as they say the country's wavered inflation is making it difficult to survive. With hardly two days for the general elections, Ishfaq Hussain, a rickshaw driver for 20 years, says life has never been so difficult as Pakistan's wavered inflation and record high fuel prices have made a hole in his pocket. Mohammed Saqib has a similar story. A vegetable vendor, Saqib's family of nine is squeezed in a two-room house in a village in outskirts of Lahore. He says only his eldest daughter was able to finish high school, while the rest had to drop out. As his family struggles to make ends meet, his sons now work as daily wage laborers while his daughters chip in by sewing, gowns and scarves. These stories are similar to many other Pakistanis who say the country's punishing inflation have been eating into their income.
امید اللہ کے سونے بھی ہاتھ میں ووٹ تو یہ کہ حکومت کا ہے مطلب کہ وہ دینا ہی دینا ہم نے The February 8 election, the first since 2018, will take place as Pakistan battles an economic crisis, soaring inflation and a weak currency while navigating a recovery path under a $3 billion IMF loan. Under the bailout deal, the IMF also got Pakistan to raise $1.34 billion in new taxation to meet fiscal adjustments. The measures fueled all-time high inflation of 38% year-on-year last May, which is still hovering above 30%. Moving on, anti-Pakistan protests were held in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and the United Kingdom on Monday by political activists who raised concern over atrocities by Islamabad and its subjugation of rights in its occupied territories while it observed the so-called Kashmir Solidarity Day, a report. Political activists held protests in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and flagged Pakistani atrocities and subjugation of rights of people in its occupied territories, while Islamabad observed its so-called Kashmir Solidarity Day on 5th of February. The protesters lambasted Pakistan for its double standards and highlighted how residents in POK and Gilgit Baltistan are reeling from soaring inflation, weed crisis and load shedding. And despite months of unrest, Islamabad has refused to resolve their problems. They said while Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to these territories, elected officials have no say in policy making and people are denied even basic fundamental rights. Protests were also held in United Kingdom's London and Bradford, where activists highlighted the plight of residents of POK and Gilgit Baltistan, who have been demanding access to electricity and water while being forced to pay unfair taxes on these basic commodities. The protests in POK were held despite threats by terror outfits. Extremism is a organization, United Jihad Council, which is the head of the Sona organization, ban outfit, which is the headquarters of Zafarabad. They are the people who are terrorizing us today, and they say that you can't do this activity. कि कितनी बड़ी बदकिस्मती और कितनी बड़ी महरूमी है कि आज हम बंदूक के साय तले हमारी ये मूवमेंट जो है वो परवान चढ़ी है श्रीलंका एक्सपेक्ट्स टू अट्रैक्ट अबाउट फाइव बिलियन डॉलर इन फॉरेन फंड्स इन द नेक्स्ट टू इयर्स वंस इट इज एबल टू फाइनलाइज द रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग ऑफ इट्स ओवरसीज डेट फॉरन मिनिस्टर अली साबरी सेड ऑन मंडे Sabri said after defaulting on its overseas debt in May 2022, the island nation has since made progress on about $11 billion of bilateral debt restructuring and hopes to have agreements in place with all key creditors by May at the latest. Sabri said they will then focus on kick-starting major infrastructure projects suspended during the crisis. The country secured a $2.9 billion IMF bailout last March which has helped temper inflation, increase state revenue and rebuild foreign exchange reserves. US President Joe Biden on Monday informed that Washington is willing to work with Bangladesh to help the South Asian nation achieve its economic goals nearly a month after Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was sworn in following an election boycotted by the opposition. Biden made his comments in a letter to Hasina. His government has been critical of Bangladesh democracy and human rights records, with the US State Department saying the poll was not free or fair. Hasina and her party won the fourth straight term, which the main opposition dismissed as a sham. Sheikh Hasina has been under fire by Western governments, who have accused her of authoritarianism, rights violations and cracking down on free speech. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.